Well, hello, my friends. Welcome. I'm super excited because today in the episode, I have Stefania Ochoa. She is an art dealer, art curator, an artist herself, and a whole lot of other, other things that you're going to learn about today. So don't go anywhere. It's going to be a great conversation. Resources, inspiring interviews, business practices, and practical advice to take your art career to the next level. Join Sergio Gomez in today's Artist Next Level and get ready to take control of your career. Well, hi, Stefania. How are you today? How are you? I am doing fantastic. Thank you for having me, Sergio. Um, my long distant long lost cousin i think <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah so thank you for being here and uh, to uh, give you a proper introduction as we kind of start our conversation so stefania ochoa she is based right now in arizona she's an art dealer for bg gallery she's also the founder of soyo magazine she's an also art director for ethos creative and a whole lot of other things that we're going to discover today and possibly my cousins <laughs> it is a uh, it is fun it's going to be a, a great chat I think all our friends are going to enjoy. One of the things that uh, I really kind of want to start with is that you and I, we met through TikTok. It's uh, one of those things that, um, you know, uh, just as you roll through the feed and somehow we ended up connected and I saw the last name Ochoa, I, it got me intrigued. And then I looked at your profile and said, also oh, art dealer. So I got intrigued twice. <laughs> so I had to reach out to you and find out a little bit more, you know, about the things that you're doing. And the more I saw also when you follow you on Instagram, so all the really cool things that you are doing as well. So I have to have Stefania here in the show, introduce it to all our friends here as well, because I'm sure they will love also the content that you're putting out there. You've been also putting out on Instagram a series for Art Collecting 101 and uh, telling people about the importance of collecting and the process of collecting, introducing them to how to, you know, how to uh, collect art that you love and that you enjoy and you want to live with. And those has been like super cool episodes, really valuable. I really enjoy them myself. And uh, that's why, uh, and, you know, uh, Stefania is gonna be sharing with us today and telling us a little bit about all the amazing things that you are doing. So Stefania, and again, thank you so much for your time. Well, thank you for such a warm introduction. Um, I have big shoes to fill now, I feel like. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you hit it right on, head, head on the nail. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, but uh, yeah, so I was introduced to art a few years ago when I was living in New York. Um, I'm originally from California, but I lived mm -hmm. in New York from 19 to 26 years old. Okay. And um, my background was in hospitality. So I was like coordinating events, managing restaurants. Mm. So I had like this whole organizational sort of uh, managerial leadership um, mm -hmm. part as like just as an ingrained into my lifestyle. Yeah. Um, and then I ended up meeting a lot of underground artists um, mm. in the music and in the art scene. And I just didn't understand how that can be a profession. So wow. I have no um, academic background in art. Mm -hmm. But just through experience, I kind of dove in and I was like, I, I want to be a part of this. So I started curating my own shows, ended up part partnering with like um, restaurants, coffee shops in different mm -hmm. boroughs in New York, because mm -hmm. again, the hospitality background, I kind of figured out how it's like, well, you need business. I have artists. Let's right. bring our collectives <laughs> together and build an amazing community around it. Right. So we ended up doing that, having fundraisers um getting really cool sponsors with like liquor um liquor brands things like that and yeah it, it was really fun and then eventually i kind of realized like you know i think more artists need a platform to kind of just like be themselves be creative and not be so wrapped up in the whole like gallery museum world mm -hmm. uh, i think i think if anything too COVID has made it uh, very clear that the whole way of interacting and bringing attention to art has completely shifted. Right. We can't go to museums. We can't go to galleries anymore. Right. So we have to change the way that um, we're applying that sort of um, entertainment into our lives or right. um, overall. Um, but I also felt that like people who don't have the academic background in art felt scared of going into these galleries, going into these environments because they felt like they needed to know the terminology right. how to uh, talk to these um, art dealers and consultants and they were just scared to ask questions so I just wanted to kind of take down that that facade and that barrier yeah. entry and make it 
so that people understood that you you can have art and be an art collector even if you only want to spend twenty dollars on a piece of work. You know, you don't need right. the millions um, necessarily. Right. So that's right. where the four principles of art collecting came in that I created, and that's why I've been posting those on Instagram because I want people to know that they can also be an art collector right. without having all of that background. Exactly. A lot of times, you know, uh, for ordinary people, when they hear the word art collecting, they think, well, that's for the 1% of the top that, you know, that you see in the news. And a lot of times they don't think about, you know, that they can be also art collectors. They can start their collection. It all starts with one piece, right? And then one becomes two and two become three and so on. So, you know, that thing that is uh, really cool that you're doing that and helping people to realize that it's possible. And by doing so, you know, you're helping an artist to continue creating, to continue working, and, uh, you know, it, it, it creates a whole ecosystem uh, and also great relationships, I think, between the collectors. A lot of times, you know, become good friends of the artists and vice versa. And uh, for you to be uh, also kind of in the middle ground, helping to make those connections, I think is super important. So tell me a little bit about. So so then uh, as you started this uh, in, in New York and working with artists and doing like this type of event. So what brings you then to Arizona? <laughs> Um, honestly, for, there's not a, um, nothing art related at all, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, it's more COVID related and it's, it's more like just personal life. So I yeah. do have a job. I have like three day jobs actually, um, right. outside of art collecting, um, and art dealing. Uh, so I'm also a financial coach. Um, okay. I also work in insurance and, um, I work in affiliate marketing. Okay. So there's a lot that I'm doing. Um, and I also speak Spanish fluently. So the insurance company that I'm working with remotely, we're, uh, the goal is to open up an office here eventually to okay. start a whole Spanish division. So mm -hmm. that's the reason I ended up moving here. And plus I was living in Los Angeles last mm -hmm. year, COVID happened, paying ridiculous rent for mm -hmm. a studio. Now what I had, like I had a studio for like maybe $1,400. Now I have a two bedroom apartment. Wow. So I have my own studio, right. I have my apartment, my office. So it's really great. I have more room and more bang for my buck. That's right. The and you got nice, and it's a nice weather too. <laughs> nice weather, exactly. <laughs> well, but, but I think that also speaks of the reality of the world today where no matter where we are located, you know, um, it, it's almost becoming irrelevant because we have the tools, you can work with collectors anywhere, with artists anywhere, and we still be able to do what you would do in a big city or even in a remote place, as long as we have an internet connection. And that kind of allows to, to really almost uh, also design your lifestyle in living in a place that you really like and enjoy and being able to still do the work that you do. Yeah, absolutely. And then I will also say that it's such a hot market right now in real estate. Therefore, mm -hmm. art collecting is, is definitely going to be something that is really important here. Um, and because it doesn't seem like there's, from my experience at least, doesn't seem like there's a lot of, um, of this whole virtual world going on in the art scene here, um, mm -hmm. I feel like it's a perfect opportunity to introduce right. um, Soyo. Uh, and Estefania Ochoa into the art collectors of Arizona. <laughs> exactly. And I think that's a great introduction to, you just said it, the Soyo magazine. I can't wait to hear what's that about. You know, uh, how did you come up with that idea? What's the, what's the, the premise of Soyo magazine? And what, so what are the, some of the programming that you guys are doing? Yeah, so Soyo has been evolution because <laughs> okay. it's never been the same thing. I think it's it's a perfect um, description of the evolution, even like for me internally, right? Um, mm -hmm. uh, my inner conscious. Uh, so Soyo started in 2017 and we started as a physical magazine. Mm -hmm. um, and we printed a magazine uh, which we featured artists, uh, musicians, designers, and every time we printed a magazine, we also talked about the global goals. Mm -hmm. um, so the UN came out with uh, 17 global goals mm -hmm. in which they would end things like world hunger, uh, build infrastructure, um, clean water for the entire world by 2030. Mm -hmm. And um, that's also a big reason as to why I love working with art and artists, because they essentially are the creators who are writing um, the script of our current history, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I think that um, 
artists embody sort of a, a mirror fact. They they kind of take in what's going on around and then um, in accordance to that, they they digest it and then art goes to canvas and then they tell their story. So it's an interpretation, it's a timestamp to where we are today. Mm -hmm. So I felt that having a magazine um, bringing in all those different artists who had their own story to tell mm. would be a great way to teach people while being inspired to right. want to be better and just do things differently. So that's and a little bit. Oh, yeah. That's pretty cool. And so you have moved from a printed magazine more into a digital um, kind of content. Tell me a little bit about that too. Yeah. So prints aren't cheap. <laughs> right. And, um, and you know, it's really fun to do a physical print and I, I am going to bring them back. Mm -hmm. um, I've also just had to take a step back because I um, I would like to think I'm a professional, but I'm also very much a creative. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I like to just jump on an idea and mm -hmm. not so much plan. Okay. So that's kind of how it happened with Soyo, if I'm being completely honest. It's just, I was like, this is a good idea. Let's do it. Let's and do then it. I did it, <laughs> you know, and that's kind of how I learned. I just, I do it. I make mistakes, you know, and just keep rolling with the punches. So right. for a while, it was just kind of me asking favors from friends. Be like, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. Would you like to contribute? Like, I can't pay you right now, but we'll figure it out, right? It'll <laughs> be really fun, I promise. <laughs> um, and that's kind of how it's been. So um, I would say, like, essentially, like, I'm a one-man team, but I have contributors and friends who I reach out to who have a similar understanding of the stories we're trying to tell and um, – the, the future we're trying to write essentially too is um, I think really important that to have a collaborative platform to do that. So, right. um, and also digital just goes a longer way. Exactly. I mean, we have an international audience that I can't essentially um, tap into with just having physical print. So mm -hmm. it, um, it's interesting, but I think the the print aspect is really cool too, as an art collector myself. Mm -hmm. because there's only such a limited amount right. and every time we printed we sold out so it's really mm -hmm. awesome to like see that it, the response is so great right no, I, I love that and, and i think uh you know that's where we have a lot of similarities and i like to also start things and and see where they go kind of i like the idea of organic growth not necessarily knowing 100 percent what it's going to be and most of the projects i've started kind of start as something and then along the way they evolve they uh, change then or they merge with something else and and then they are what they are right now but five years from now they might be something totally different and i think that is pretty cool you know it's adaptation and it's about being okay with with making those changes along the go and also recognizing sometimes like uh there's, there's a time to push and a time to also to pull back a little bit and uh, re uh organize yourself refocus and say okay the next iteration of this is going to take shape on this and that but uh, even the you know, as you don't have the actual print magazine right now, you guys are pretty active on your uh, on your social media. I saw that I think uh, recently you guys you did an interview also there on Instagram. So you're still providing uh, again valuable content and information to those who follow you through that. Yeah, and that's why I'm always looking for different partnerships on how to kind of like take away from my plate to pass on the the mm -hmm. baton to someone else who maybe knows better, knows yeah. more than do and is um, there to better inform so we actually yeah the interview that I just did today was with these uh, two gentlemen who I'm really good friends with um, who I met in New York as well mm -hmm. and they do a music podcast so they're mm -hmm. going to be taking on curating the whole music scene for Soyo which is super exciting yeah. um yeah that that is that is cool that is cool so let's continue moving on into some of the other things that you are doing too uh, i keep discovering more about you as we as we chat so tell me about uh, also this uh across america uh topic that i when you know when we first kind of started exchanging conversations through the text and stuff uh and then i attended one of your clubhouse uh, conversations um tell me about that you know art across america or or I don't, I'm not even sure if that's the actual name, but tell me a little bit about that. That sounded pretty interesting. Yeah, it actually is Art Across America. Um, thank you for asking that because it's been a project that I put on pause because I, I was moving around. I was basically mm -hmm. living like a nomad for three months, like yeah. Mexico, New York, Nevada, California. Now I'm in Arizona, finally. So <laughs> I wasn't able to kind of like set that up. But yeah, so Art Across America is this um, monthly project 
that we're doing and with BG Gallery Soya Magazine, we've collaborated to um, basically talk to artists, art writers, collectors, um, people in the art world within different states as well as the territories. Mm. Um, so we started with the American territories, which was really cool mm -hmm. because honestly, I didn't even know a lot about our American territories. Um, so I've been able to interview people in American Samoa, um, in Hawaii, and I believe we did uh, uh, Guam. We did Guam as well. Wow. Um, and, you know, it was really cool because we've been bringing attention to contemporary, but also indigenous art. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so important when we think about America, because we, I feel like it's such a melting pot and we forget mm -hmm. those actual roots mm -hmm. um, and significant cultural roots that evolved right. from, that eventually make the contemporary art that we see today. So that's what the ongoing project is about, is having that story be told of the, the contrast between new and old and what, what, yeah. what is evolving into today, right? So... That's very yeah. cool. And and the way you're doing that is through Clubhouse or you're doing also through other ways? Or that was we, we've been filming those on Zoom. Ah, and then okay. I upload them onto YouTube. Ah, okay. But there's also the Clubhouse thing, right? So or... that was that was more so used to kind of try and target people who maybe ah, okay, okay. wanted to come on board. Um so Clubhouse is still fairly new to me. Yeah. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out kind of like how it works and even trying to make time to even use it because <laughs> it's like another application that I have to like master. I already have TikTok, I already have LinkedIn, I have I know, like, right? Instagram, Twitter, like, and now this, and then the NFTs are taking over. <laughs> oh, I know, my goodness. Yeah, we don't even have to start on that conversation. <laughs> but no, that is that is uh, very cool though. You mean all the other things. And at the end of the day, you know, um, they may be all separate, but at the same time, they all interact, they all interconnect, they all inform each other. And I think that's kind of what, what creates uh, the excitement for the things that you're doing. Uh, you are very energized. You have a lot of energy for all these things. And that's pretty exciting to see uh, on what you are doing. Now, uh, as you work uh, uh, as a, you know, on the role of uh, you as also art dealer and matching uh, artists with uh, uh, collectors and so on, uh, how do you find artists for the collectors that you are working with or how do collectors find you as well? So artists, that's actually one of the most fun parts. Um, social media is great for mm -hmm. finding artists. Um, honestly, if I like something, I'll just reach out. I'm not scared. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like to reach out to people. I feel like that's the best way to connect, especially in the digital age. It's so easy to send an email comment on things and yeah um people submit stuff sometimes um i used to have some interns who would do some outreach as well and i would get kind of like a, a younger even perspective because um, mm -hmm. um i was working with some gen zers which is super cool too is like seeing how they're adapting to everything and they're perceiving the world right. um and then asking mentors of course but yeah, it kind of just happens organically. Mm -hmm. um, but I will say I do have like a kind of like a foundation of like what, what values I set for who I work with. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very intentional when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. Because again, the reason I started Soyo was to bring attention to the global goals. And I believe very much in collaboration. Mm -hmm. And um, also as a minority woman, I feel like it's my um, minority woman with privilege. Right. Um, know that. So I feel like it's my duty as someone who has the privilege to have a voice and feel confident and empowered to mm -hmm. give a platform and be a voice for those who don't have one. So if I see that there's someone who has a genuine message or um, is sharing something that the world just has to know, um, is intentional about what they do, um, and they they need someone like me like that's that's who i want to work with so mm -hmm. i feel like that's how i i match uh, my artists mm -hmm. and kind of similar way with clients too you know like mm -hmm. um i've been in sales for a while now so um i will say people buy from people they like right, right. so uh, i make it a point to create a relationship with the people i work with so mm -hmm. oftentimes the people who buy from me are my friends 
Yeah. And that's yeah. kind of how it works. Very cool. Now that's that's great. And you know, in this uh, podcast and also through this video show, there's a lot of artists who watch and listen to it. You know, what would be like maybe a couple of things of uh, of advice that you would give to an artist who's putting himself or herself out there in the world and you know uh, putting their brand out and growing uh, that you can give them as the world continues to change so rapidly. A couple of things that you know, if you were to uh, meet with an artist for coffee, you know, and then you know, talking about uh, what. Two or, two or three of the things that you think are super important for an artist to be doing right now in this season. Yeah. Um, I think this goes for artists and this goes for everyone too. Mm -hmm. um, but for one is figure out what your why is. Make mm -hmm. sure that your purpose as to what it is, whatever it is that you're doing, make yeah. sure it's big enough. It's big enough to wake you up in the morning, big enough to make you put up with the rejection that you're constantly right. going to get. Because if it's not strong enough, you're going to quit. So if you quit, you're not going to see success at the end of that tunnel. Uh, another thing is, okay, I understand their why they're, they have the momentum. Um, and then also just get after it, do it execution. You can't just right. hope for something to land on your lap because it's not <laughs> right. Uh, another thing is um, I would ask how they're presenting themselves now. Uh, take a look at what that looks like because oftentimes people kind of just I mean I've gotten emails with like 20 attachments and I'm just like uh-uh I'm not <laughs> opening that <laughs> exactly <laughs> like figure out how to make like a cool portfolio that'll get someone's attention I actually just got one yesterday that was amazing yeah. um I'll give her a shout out her name's Lizzie and she actually taught me about NFTs um so <laughs> I am really excited because I, I even put up my own NFTs recently. Anyway, <laughs> um, so she sent me a video and instead of having her bio typed out, she just kind of had like a basic photo and like a little pointers on the, like the first section, but she was like, her voice was reading her bio for me. And I thought that was beautiful. And then her, her art was being exhibited. She showed the process of her making the work. Mm -hmm. um, it was, it, it just felt interactive. And I thought that was incredible so i will say there's a lot of incredible artists mm -hmm. and um there's a lot of incredible people out there too right but even when you think about um the the financial disparity in our world right um right. in order to be the one percent like what do those people have to do mm -hmm. so you can be extraordinary and hope just for someone to discover you but oftentimes you have to be the most extraordinary of the extraordinary <laughs> So right. make sure that like whatever you're doing is is something like worth compelling someone like mm -hmm. like I want to be able to feel it through a screen because I feel like energy is just it does transpire right. even if it's not in front of me like um, I've had conversations over the phone where I can feel people's sadness to mm -hmm. feeling their, their happiness and so just make sure that how you're going about that has that intent because it will resonate I promise. Mm -hmm. Now that's that's awesome. Thank you, Stephanie, again for sharing some of your amazing advice, and uh, I, I love it. I think our friends are gonna find also really good uh, insights from that. And of course, we invite them to put them into practice, right? To think about every every word that Stephanie has been sharing with us right now. Well, we are running out of time already, believe it or not. Right, time goes by really fast here, and I'm sure our friends will want to connect with you. Will want to follow the things that you're doing. Uh, so if you would not mind sharing where can our friends connect with you and uh, listen more about the advice that you're providing and the connections you're making and to where do you want to direct them to? Yeah, sure. Um, thank you again for having me. Sandra. I really appreciate your time. It's an honor. Um, so you can find me on my personal Instagram. That's thug life. It's spelled T H U G L I F three. And uh, then there's Soyo magazine, Instagram as well. Um, S O Y Y O M A G A Z I N E. <laughs> and you can also visit soyomag.com. Perfect. And I'm going to include all those links also in the description of the podcast and of the video. So you guys can also check it out right there. If you are driving or something, doing something right now, you know, you can check those out later. So, Stefania, you've been so awesome. Thank you so much for your time. And I uh, appreciate you. appreciate everything that you're doing, all the uh, good uh, positivity that you're putting out in the world. Keep doing that. We need more people like you. And uh, we hope, uh, hopefully, we get a chance to personally meet at some point. 
And that would be really, really great to have a great conversation. So I look forward to uh, continue following you uh, and on social and um, you know sharing all the things that you are doing with the world. So thank to all our friends who are uh, listening or watching right now. Do us a big favor. Stephanie and I will be super, super, super excited. If before you go, you click on that little button that's called share. It's right there. Sometimes you miss it. Sometimes you forget about it. So don't forget to like, okay, Sergio said I need to click on share. So click on share and then post it because you never know there may be another artist right now who needs the words that Stephanie has just shared. You have no idea. Maybe somebody's about to give up. Maybe somebody's about to like, oh, you know, this is just not working. I'm not showing up. I, people are not finding me. Well, that Stephanie just gave us like some really good advice that maybe somebody uh, could really uh, use right now. So do us a big favor click on that share button and we will be very excited. And if you uh, share this on your social media, make sure to tag both of us so that we can also reshare it as well. So have a great day. Thank you, Stefania. Thank you for your time and enjoy it. Check out our website at www.theartistnextlevel.com where you will find our podcast library, learn about our upcoming webinars, find resources relevant to your career and much more. Thanks for listening to today's podcast, and we'll see you at the next level.